It's not selfish to want your friends to be good friends to you. You can actually love people from afar. And I think we fight really hard to keep the same level of and the same depth of intimacy that we've had with other people. Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you are all doing well. Today we are going to be talking about the reality of losing friends in your 20s. So if you know anything about me, if you see me anywhere on the internet, you know one thing I'm going to talk about is friendship, especially friendship amongst women. And the reason why is I have seen how much I have benefited greatly from having amazing friends around me who have shaped the woman that I am today, encouraged me, been there for me as a support system. And I will forever preach the message of the fact that you cannot do life alone and you need people around you who you can do life with. And so friendship is something which is so, so close to my heart. And I even have a book about it with my best friend and a whole sisterhood community, which I co-founded with her to promote that. And so if you haven't plugged into To My Sisters and you haven't read the book To My Sisters, then everything's gonna be linked down below for you to find a digital community at the very least. But it is true that sometimes friendships can break your heart as much as romantic relationships can. And I have had my fair share of broken down friendships and friendships which have just sailed into the distance. And sometimes I have felt like it has left me stranded, but the truth of the matter is losing friends in your 20s is very normal. And that is my first point. Point. Sometimes you just have friends for a season. Now, when you enter into your 20s and, you know, you may have just left university or you're really getting started on this whole becoming an adult and an independent person thing, you may have moved away, you may be moving out, you may just be navigating the beginnings of your career in a completely different schedule and lifestyle to what you had when you were studying or in education. And then you kind of come to this point where you realize most of your friends you probably had because of school or college or university. And actually, now you're not really in that space anymore. You're actually a different person as you have grown and developed over time. And that is completely normal and completely natural. And sometimes we outgrow our friends because we grow up or we just grow apart and we become different people. And so I want to remind anyone who may be, you know, losing friendships in their 20s for no other reason other than just growing apart, that this thing is actually quite normal and happens to a lot of people. I've been really blessed to still be surrounded by a lot of the friends that I had whilst I was in secondary school but even with that the friends that I have I pretty much made in the second like last leg actually of secondary school it was when we were kind of in sixth form and I had rejigged my entire friendship group most of the friends that I had when I was like I don't know, 12, 13, 15, or like up to the age of 15, 16, I'm actually not that close with anymore. And I think that brings to me to my second point, which is sometimes it's not about burning a bridge, but actually just drifting apart. And I've realized that as I've gotten older, the difference in my friendship dynamics hasn't necessarily been around hostility or severing ties, but actually just becoming a bit more distant and a bit more different. And that's okay. That should be embraced. You can actually love people from afar. And I think sometimes we can be mistaken to fight so hard to preserve the same level of intimacy we had with our friends in a past past season when actually life and life circumstances and self-discovery have caused for us to kind of drift apart and it doesn't mean that we now have to you know completely sever a tie there are friends I had in my childhood who I can still call upon and be like hey happy birthday I'm praying for all the best and they still call on me to be a part of their lives in particular milestones but you know it's not the same meeting up every day being on the phone for hours and that's actually all right sometimes the nature of our relationship relationships change and the way we show our love and our affection for each other does 
change over time and it doesn't necessarily mean there's bad blood there but it does mean that we're navigating our relationship in a new way and I think that requires a lot of communication and sometimes these things go unsaid but there should at least be mutual understanding and the reason why I wanted to say this is because I think we're in a generation which really glamorizes cutting people off because they're not acting the way they used to or maybe you're not as close as you were and so it's easy to kick into overthinking mode and thinking this person may have bad blood um, towards you or ill feeling towards you when actually it's just life and things change over time. And so I wanted to reassure you that sometimes you do experience a bit of a drifting between your friends, but you should still remain, you know, good hearted towards them and good willed by reaching out from time to time and kind of reciprocating that level of communication as you feel is best for you and your relationship as well. But it's important to embrace that seasons change and that includes the seasons within your friendships. The next thing I would say is a reality when it comes to navigating friendships in your 20s and losing friends in your 20s is the need to forgive yourself and to forgive other people. We're getting to a stage in our lives when you're in your 20s where you're kind of maturing, you're setting your eyes on other things and it's important to reflect on some of the things that may have hurt you, some of the things that may have been said to you in your childhood or teen years which shaped the way you viewed yourself and viewed other people and sometimes that means reflecting on the interactions you've had with your friends and thinking about how they made you feel. You may have been you know, backhand bullied. I don't know if you kind of get what I'm saying, but people who were your friends, but you were really frenemies where they didn't really like you or they'd kind of, you know, knock you down a few pegs just to keep you in your place. Or maybe you weren't fully accepted by your friendship group, or maybe you were the person who would kind of pick on people. And now you've gone to a point where you're like, actually, I wasn't that great to the people who I called friends in my life or was a friend to. Or maybe you have realized that somebody did you really dirty in the past and it completely broke your heart. I think it's important to really acknowledge those feelings because our friendships when we are younger really do shape who we become as people, our morals, our values, and also our perspectives on relationships. And so it's important to mourn, grieve, and also heal from those relationships by also exploring who you need to forgive, what wrong was done to you, and how you may have done wrong as well, and being able to forgive forgive yourself, forgive other people to be able to move forward productively in friendship, especially as new people enter your life as well. You're entering into the big bad world of work and the internet and life and finding new people in new spaces which you enter as an adult and it's important that you undergo the maturation that is necessary by reflecting on the past and making sure that you don't carry bad habits or bad feelings into your future and into your future relationships and then project them onto the people who you meet and so really search your heart and search your mind and really reflect on your friendships that may be you know drifting away from you or maybe are still in your life presently and think about the things that were done well and may have gone a bit better and how you can work on them when it comes to existing relationships and new ones which you want to foster. The next thing I would say has been more so a big realisation when it comes to losing friends in your 20s or deciding who to stay friends with in your 20s is intentionality is key. Making sure that you and the people in your life are intentional about cultivating relationship and not just expecting it to happen because you bear the title of friends or best friends or sisters, you know, or just being in the same space or conveniently being placed into doing life with each other really does help you decide who you're going to stay friends with. Friendships require intentionality. Nurturing any relationship requires intentionality. And this is why for us, writing to my sisters as a guide to building lifelong friendships was super important because you get to a point in your 20s when you realize convenience is not enough. Being in the same space is not enough. Seeing each other every day or every week or every month is not enough to sustain and cultivate a healthy relationship which will last the test of time and seasons. I think it's important for us to remember that we want to be doing friendship with people who really want to do friendship as an active work and as an activity and this doesn't mean that your friendships need to be draining but it does mean that you want to approach friendships with a mindfulness and intentionality which shows people and yourself that these relationships 
matter. They matter to you, it matters to them. And I have found that I've had to let go of friends and even more, other people have had to let go of me because there's been a lack of intentionality there to cultivate our relationships. And I'll be honest and say, there are some friendships that I have not done very well because I lacked intentionality. I lacked the ability to communicate as often as I should have, or to at least communicate that I couldn't communicate as often as I should have. And I think it's important to reflect on these things and think about how intentional am I being as a friend, but also when it comes to taking inventory of your friendships, how intentional are other people being about cultivating a relationship with me and checking up on me and making sure that I know that they're there. It's not selfish to want your friends to be good friends to you. And so take time to really think about how intentional are you about cultivating good friendships and good healthy relationships in your life and surround yourself with people who will do the same. The next thing I'd say, and this is something that's more so encouraged me as I have lost some friends and gained some friends in my 20s, you have not met everybody who will love you yet. And this has been one of those kind of mantras which I have said to myself quite often, especially as, you know, people come and people go because it really lets me know that life is long. (laughs) Life is long and I don't know who is in my future um, and I don't know who else will come to be able to show me a lovely kind of love, a, a friendly kind of love, a love which is worth fighting and contending for. But also it helps me to know that I can actually let things go which are unhealthy for me because God will send me something new. God will send me something to fill in that space, whether it's a person or a level of understanding or a contentment to be able to close a chapter which no longer serves me. And I think it's important to remind yourself of the fact that you don't have to hold on to friends who may not be the best for you because you feel like I'm going to be left lonely. You haven't met everybody who's going to love you yet. You haven't entered into certain spaces yet. You haven't maybe intentionally looked for good friends yet or you just don't know what's in store for you in the future and so do not have an overwhelming fear that you're going to end up doing life alone because you haven't met everybody who will love you yet and that also is encouraging to the person who feels as though I haven't met people who I click with or I haven't met people who like me or I'm not liked by enough people maybe you just haven't met your people yet and sometimes that's just the reality of life maybe you need to travel more enter more spaces and do more active finding of friends who you can do life with. And that brings me on to my last point, which is that you're not the only one. You're not the only person who is trying to have a healthy, flourishing and beautiful friendship in your life. There are thousands, millions, billions of people out there who want to be in community and everyone has a different approach to relationships everyone has a different approach to friendships but there is someone out there for you not just in the form of a romantic partner if that's something that you want but also in the form of friends there are people who will be able to laugh with you about the things that you find funny It's just about going on an active search to be in common spaces where you can find like-minded people, whether that be through the internet and the many opportunities that it presents to us, or through offline engagements and offline community activities, which you can do with other people. And so be sure to remind yourself that you are not the only one. You're not the only good friend out there. You're not the only woman who's working on herself to be able to be good for not just her future, and her future partner or her family but also for the friends in her life you're not the only one out there yearning for sisterhood either there are other people actively searching for what it is that you desire as well and so make sure that your heart and your mind is open and not closed off to accepting people who want to be your friend maybe because other people have hurt you in the past. Be open to making new friends. I know it seems wild, especially because it feels like we're all getting a bit older now that we've entered into our 20s, but you can make friends at any 
age. I'm still encouraged by stories from my mom who was still making like friends and actively enjoying other people's companies well into her 60s. And I think it's beautiful to have a heart which is open to people and open to meeting new people, learning their stories and maybe merging your stories together. So I hope that this video has been helpful. I hope that it's given you some encouragement to know that Navigating friendships in your 20s is hard, but there is so much, so much hope to be able to build lifelong friendships. And like I said, if you want to have more insights into this, into building sisterhood and the importance of it, but also how it all ties into your personal development and is beneficial ultimately for you, definitely check out my book, To My Sisters, A Guide to Building Lifelong Friendships. I'll have all the links down below and plug into the sisterhood. Myself and Renee, my best friend, would love to have you as a part of our digital sisterhood community. Leave your comments down below sharing your thoughts, your tips, your advice and your lessons, your wise lessons that you have learned from navigating friendship in your 20s and maybe even your 30s and beyond. I will talk to you very very soon and as always you know the drill, stay beautiful and stay blessed. Mwah.